but it is telling, right? You've got nine billion in net income from the family family operating income, which was uh, thirteen billion down to nine billion, but still reliable nine billion a year, right? Is thirty six billion. So Facebook seven times earnings. Woo! Seven times earnings. Wow. And revenue is not falling off a cliff. It's kind of stable. It's not growing, but it grew a lot after the pandemic. So when the revenue shoots up like crazy, and it doesn't shoot back down, it just kind of hangs in at that really high level. That's, I mean, to me, that's a good thing. I don't see why that's a bad thing. People are really uh, losing their minds over this, I think. We probably expanded a little too fast um, with the CapEx and the employee spend, but I don't know. Oh, yeah, I was uh, in the middle of uh, in, uh, implementing the cash flow statement. Let's see, so here's the DAP 2930. Again, what, how many companies have this kind of trend? You know, people, oh, face, people aren't using Facebook. Well, what does this look like? You have three billion people using the product every single day. It's amazing. Family map is almost four billion. It's just nuts. Yeah, so revenue is, is you know, was in this 20 billion range. You can't see this part of the chart but bumped up to this 28 billion range and it's been hanging in there just fine. So to me, there's the daily actives, 1984. How much is US of that? 197, 2960, US, Canada, MAU. You got Asia continuing to grow. The rest of the world continuing to grow. Europe is flat. Here's the DAU 2958. And this is uh this is just Facebook. So this is not Instagram, this is not WhatsApp. So the the Facebook MAU is the highest number it's ever been, 266 which for US and Canada is damn near most of the country, right? I mean, if you think, what's the population of Canada? 30 million? 74% of America and Canada. 38 million for Canada. 332, 332 and 38. 332 plus 38 is 370, so they have literally 72% of every man, woman, and child alive. So that literally includes babies, people up to, you know, ages 6, 10, whatever. <laughs> if you excluded those, if you exclude the bottom 10%, right? The bottom 10% of the population, which presumably is too young to be on a computer, you've got they've got eighty percent of all people, and that sounds about right. If you think about your weird friends that don't have Facebook, that's that's about it, right? All right. Rest of world ads, U.S. ads. All right, U.S. This is just revenue. This isn't just ads, though. <sighs> I need the uh, total number, but this includes shit like this includes reality. Oh nope, here it is. Perfect. Twelve seven six. The ad number is in black. And the reality number is up here, and the total number is up here. Perfect. That's exactly what I needed. So if you look at the U.S. and Canada ad revenue number, 
it peaked at 15 billion in the December quarter. We're about to see another December quarter. But if you look at year over year, it essentially is flat. 13.1 billion versus 12.8 billion, pretty much the same. Here, it was down a little bit. Here, it was up a little bit. Here, it was up quite a bit. So this is like pandemic peak. Um, we don't know what Q4 will look like, although let's get the guidance. Uh, they gave guidance. Uh, 32, 32 and a half billion. So looks like they're guided to negative 2%, which is basically flat. Um, yeah, what a great stock. This is like got to be my, this to me, like would be a top holding. This isn't like a no brainer. You, you have to be dumb not to be long Facebook. You have to wait. They're going to have to wait for years, uh, possibly, for people to get interested in the stock again. But that's okay. Investing is a waiting game. Investing transfers money from the patient, the impatient to the patient. So be patient and money will be transferred to you. Assuming you've made the right decisions. You can be as patient as you want on AMC. You're probably not going to get paid. <sighs> okay, I think I got everything I need from the queue. We won't get the um, next quarterly report until January, so it'll be a little while. We're in the midst of Q4. Good time to touch up our models. Get the last pieces of the cash flow statement together. Let's see, got the debt part, leases, overdraft, and other financing activities. Cool. Um, hmm. Yes, okay, that's the right number. Uh, exchange rates, okay, also correct. Great, now we just need headcount. Um, look at the headcount. It's wild. 87, wow. Look at all the people they added for no reason. They probably did not need to do that. They have to do what Elon's doing. They basically have to just cut half the company's employees and just wing it. We published a newsroom post announcing a planned layoff. See, that's what's so crazy to me. Right, like you, you go from sixty thousand people to ninety thousand people, and then you fire all of them. Like, does that make sense, sense to you guys? Like, we're gonna hire twenty thousand people. Ah, you know what? We're gonna fire them. Very weird. I mean, it's 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 better than not reacting, right? I guess you better you know, if you're going to make a mistake, you might as well fix it. Um, Mark Zuckerberg just shared the following with Med employees: Today, I'm sharing some of the most difficult changes we've made in Meta's history. I've decided to reduce the size of our team by about thirteen percent and let more than 11,000 of our talented employees go. We are also taking a number of additional steps to become a leaner and more efficient company by cutting discretionary spending and extending our hiring freeze through Q1. I want to take accountability for these decisions and for how we got here. I know this is tough for everyone, and I'm especially sorry to those impacted. How did we get here? At the start of COVID, the world moved rapidly online, and the surge of e-commerce led to outsized revenue growth. 
Many people predicted this would be a permanent acceleration that would continue even after the pandemic ended. I did too, so I made the decision to significantly increase our investments. Unfortunately, this did not play out the way I expected. Not only has online commerce returned to prior trends, but the macroeconomic downturn, increased competitions, and ad signal loss have caused our revenue to be much lower than I expected. I got this wrong, and I take responsibility for that. In this new environment, we need to become more capital efficient. We've shifted more of our resources onto a smaller number of high-priority growth areas, like our AI discovery engine, our ads and business platforms, and our long-term vision for the metaverse. We've cut across our business, including scaling back budgets, reducing perks, and shrinking our real estate footprint. We're restructuring teams to increase our efficiency, but these measures alone won't bring our expenses in line with our revenue growth, so I made the hard decision to let people go. How will this work? There's no good way to do a layoff, but we hope to get all the relevant information to you as quickly as possible, and then do whatever we can to support you through this. Everyone will get an email soon, letting you know what this layoff means for you. After that, every employee will have the opportunity to speak with somebody to get their questions answered and join information sessions. Some of our details in the US include severance. We will pay 16 weeks of base pay, plus two additional weeks for every year of service with no cap. PTO, we'll pay for all remaining PTO time. RSU vesting, everyone impacted will receive their November 15th, 2022 vesting. Health insurance, we'll cover the cost of healthcare for people and their families for six months. Career services, we'll provide three months of career support with an external vendor, including access to unpublished job leads. Immigration support, I know this is especially difficult if you're here on a visa. There's a notice period before termination and some visa grace periods, which means everyone will have time to make plans and work through their immigration status. We have dedicated immigration specialists to help you based, help guide you based on what you and your family need. Outside the US, support will be similar and we'll follow up soon with separate processes that take into account local employment laws. We made the decision to remove access to most meta systems for people leaving today, given the amount of access to sensitive information. But we're keeping email addresses active throughout the day so people can say farewell. While we're making reductions in every organization across both the family of apps and reality labs, some teams will be affected more than others. Recruiting will be disproportionately affected since we're planning to hire fewer people next year. We're also restructuring our business teams more substantially. This is not a reflection of the great work these groups have done, but what we need going forward. The leaders of each group will schedule time to discuss what this means for your team over the next couple days. The teammates who will be leaving us are talented and passionate, and have made an important impact on our company and community. Each of you have made, helped make Meta a success. Not as much as me, but each of you have helped. And I'm grateful for it, because I'm one of the richest people there is. I'm sure you'll go on to do great work in other places. What other changes are we making? I view layoffs as a last resort. So we continued, so we decided to rein in sources, other sources of costs before letting teammates go. Overall, this will add up to a meaningful cultural shift in how we operate, even though I doubled CapEx spending year over year. <laughs> for example, as we shrink our real estate footprint, we've, we're transitioning to desk sharing for people who already spend most of their time outside the office. We'll roll out more cost-cutting changes like this in the coming months. We're also extending our hiring freeze through Q1 with a small number of exceptions. I'm going to watch our business performance, operational efficiency, and other macroeconomic factors to determine whether and how much we should resume hiring at that point. This will give us the ability to control our cost structure in the event of a continued economic downturn. It will also put us on a path to achieve a more efficient cost structure that we outlined to investors recently. This is a sad moment, and there's no way around that. To those who are leaving, I want to thank you again for everything you've put into place, into this place. We would not be here today without your hard work, and I'm grateful for your contributions. To those who are staying, I know this is a difficult time for you too. Not only are we saying goodbye to people we're worked, we've worked closely with, but many of you also feel uncertainty about the future. I want you to know that we're making these decisions to make sure our footing is strong. I believe we are deeply underestimated as a company today. Billions of people use our services to connect and our communities keep growing. Our core business is among the most profitable ever built with huge potential ahead. 
and we're leading in developing the technology to define the future of social connection and the next computing platform. We do historically important work. I'm confident that if we work efficiently, we'll come out of this downturn stronger and more resilient than ever. So, in 2023, um, as either you know, roughly the same size or uh, even a slightly smaller organization than we are today. Three of the primary areas we're going to focus on are our AI discovery engine that's powering real okay? and, and other recommendation experiences, uh, our ads and business messaging platforms, and our future vision for the metaverse. The internal indications I've seen uh, suggest we're doing leading work and are on the right track with these investments. So. I think that we should keep investing heavily in these areas. As I've shared before, uh, our goal is to grow Family of Apps operating income such that even with our AI infrastructure and reality labs investments, uh, we can still meaningfully grow our overall company operating income in the long term. Our current surge in CapEx is largely due to building out our AI infrastructure, and we would expect CapEx to come down as a percent of revenue over the long term. Uh, we expect Reality Labs expenses uh, will increase meaningfully again in 2023, um, with the biggest drivers of that being the launch of the next generation of our consumer Quest headset, uh, and hiring that has been done in 2022, but for which we're gonna be paying the first full year of salaries uh, next year. Um, more broadly, beyond 2023, we expect to pace Reality Labs investments to ensure that we can achieve our goal of growing overall company operating income. Our capital allocation philosophy over the long term is to allocate a portion of the profits generated from the family of apps towards these future focused areas, while enabling a greater return of capital to shareholders. All right, now I'd like to share some updates on the progress that we're seeing in, in, in these product areas. Our AI discovery engine uh, is playing an increasingly important role across our products, especially uh, as advances enable us to recommend more interesting content from across our networks and feeds uh, that used to be primarily driven just by the people and accounts you follow. So this, of course, includes Reels, which continues to grow quickly across our apps, uh, both in production and consumption. There are now more than 140 billion Reels plays across Facebook and Instagram uh, each day. That's a 50% increase from six months ago. Reels is incremental to time spent on our apps. Uh, the trends look good here, and we believe that we're gaining time spent share on competitors like TikTok. Over time, uh, I expect a few things to set our products apart here. First is that our discovery engine work allows us to recommend all types of content beyond Reels as well, including photos, text, links, communities, short and long form videos, and more. Second is that we can mix this content along posts from, uh, alongside posts from your family and friends, um, which can't be generated by AI alone. And third, as more social interactions move to messaging, uh, we're developing a flywheel between discovery and messaging that are gonna make these apps stronger. Um, on Instagram alone, people already reshare reels uh, one billion times a day through uh, DMs. Moving to monetization, uh, I've discussed in the past how the growth of short-form video creates near-term challenges, um, since Reels doesn't monetize as a rate of feed or stories yet. Uh, that means that as Reels grows, uh, we're displacing revenue from higher monetizing surfaces. And I think this is clearly the right thing to do um, so that we Reels can grow with the demand that we're seeing, um, but closing this gap is, is also a high priority. Um, even with the progress we've made, uh, we're still choosing to take a more than $500 million quarterly uh, revenue headwind with this shift, uh, but we expect to get to a more neutral place over the next 10, uh, sorry, 12 to 18 months. Um, I, I mentioned last quarter that Instagram Reels had crossed a $1 billion annual revenue run rate. Um, you know, we continue scaling monetization across both Instagram and Facebook, and, and the combined run rate across uh, these apps is now $3 billion. Uh, beyond Reels, messaging is another major monetization so opportunity. Uh, billions of people and millions uh, of businesses this is for use finance. WhatsApp and Messenger every day. This is finance chat, so if you're not going to talk finance, this is not the place to be. create valuable experiences. 
Uh, we started with click to message okay. ads, Sorry. which lets businesses run ads on Facebook and Instagram. That oh man, now I'm stuck Messenger, talking like WhatsApp Mark Zuckerberg. Instagram Direct, so they can communicate with customers directly. And this is one of our fastest growing ads products with a $9 billion annual run rate. Um, and this revenue is, is mostly on click to messenger today since we started there first, but click to WhatsApp uh, just passed a $1.5 billion run rate and growing more than 80% uh, year over year. Paid messaging um, is another opportunity that we're starting to tap into and it, it continues to grow quickly, but from a smaller base. Uh, we're, we're putting the foundation in place now to, to scale this with key partnerships like Salesforce, uh, which lets all businesses on their platform use WhatsApp as the main messaging service to answer. Yeah, um, I still think uh, $200 a share is the right price for Facebook, and it's trading at around 100 so around a double. And I don't assume any heroic revenue growth going forward. 